Hi. I'm going. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Good. So I have some questions for you. Um, Okay. what inspired you to reimagine these songs now? Is there any significance of the timing? Um, I've been working on this project since 2020. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So when the band broke up in 2017, I just, you know, I started doing my own thing and, um, I was touring on my own and made some, mu some new original music of my own. But when I would go tour, um, I didn't have enough original music to fill, you know, a, a 90 minute show or an hour show even. So, uh, I was trying like new sort of reimagined versions of of old yellow card songs in my own shows. Um, and the music I was making was definitely more um, in the kind of ambient singer songwriter. Um, later on, I made it up an EP that was um, pretty electronic driven. Um, so just really, you know, in a totally different universe than, than yellow card. Um, so I was, I was reimagining the songs in these different, uh, different ways. Um, and during the pandemic, I just, I had a, an idea to, um, put out a record basically of, of reimagined songs. And I, I was going to reach out to, um, friends, singers of other bands, musicians from other bands and see if I could just get a bunch of fun people to come and guest vocal or, you know, do guest guitar or whatever on, on the songs. Mm -hmm. So almost everyone I talked to would have been from, you know, our genre, our scene of music would have been, you know, the newfound glories and all time lows of the world. Um, and so I, I was reaching out to them. I talked to um, uh, Vic from Pierce the Veil about doing a song and everyone was really interested in it. Um, but it was like, as you deal with when you're doing guest vocal spots and things like that, you know, I have to talk to my manager and I got to see what we have going on. And it, so it was a really slow process. Um, but one of the artists that I reached out to, um, was not in you know the warp tour yellow card pop punk whatever whatever genre word you want to use mm. um my friend mark bird who is one of uh one of the two members of hammock mm -hmm. so i have been a fan of post rock and ambient music for a long 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 time decade decades now um my gateway drug was probably explosions in the sky and that just opened my mind to all these different artists and eventually led me into like a lot of the ambient electronica and stuff I love now. Um, I don't really listen to a lot of music with words anymore in my life. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a big fan of, of instrumental music, um, whether, whether it be post-rock, uh, you know, that kind of more like ambient EDM. I don't listen to like super heavy club EDM, um, but I do listen to a lot of electronic music um, and soundtracks and score and things like that. So um Anyways, Hammock was a, is a huge influence uh, for me. Music that I just love to They're in my top five, you know, Spotify wrapped every single year. I, I absolutely love their band. And I connected with Mark on Twitter, actually. Um, Yellow Card was doing some of our last shows ever, or at least at the time, what we thought were our last shows ever uh, in Australia. And I was definitely struggling mentally at that time, you know, dealing with kind of grieving the loss of the band and like what I was going to do with my life now after doing the same thing for, for nearly 20 years and um, hammock and, and the music they make is very um, it lends itself to mental health. I, I think, you know, and, and that sort of meditative state to focus and center yourself. And so I was listening to a lot of hammock during that final tour. So we were in Australia and um you know, I was just sitting on the balcony of our, our apartment, apartment, hotel room thing. And, and I just tweeted something like hammock is really getting me through right now. Um, and I got a reply from Mark and he was like, Hey man, that's really cool. Great to hear. Thank you. Um, you know, and we got to chatting a little bit, um, direct messaging there and realized that we both at the time I lived there, we both lived in Franklin, Tennessee. So we made plans to get together and grab lunch when I got home, this is in 2017. Mm -hmm. Um, so we did. We hung out. We we connected. We stayed in touch. Um, we we hung out and, and and you know grabbed lunch or grabbed a cold beer a few times while I still lived in Tennessee. Um, and then uh, during the pandemic, when I had this idea to do this record, I reached out to Mark and said, "Hey, I'm doing this thing, and, and would you be interested in maybe uh, d doing a track with me?" And you know, was, I I figured if I'm going to do all of these emo pop punk you know, legends on this record. This one's going to be a little off the wall, but I think it would be really cool to try. 
Um, and so while everyone else was having to do the necessary steps of talking to their managers, talking to their labels, and seeing if they can get approved for guest vocals and whatever, in that time, Mark uh, and Andrew from Hammock just did the, their song and they just sent it back to me. And all I gave them was a piano and a vocal, you know, so I just, I laid out the basic chords of the song on a piano and I re I reimagined the vocal and, and as, as I do on all of these songs, you'll hear on a hopeful sign, mm -hmm. um, much, much lower registered vocally, much more breathy, much more in line with the music I was making on my own, you know, post yellow card in 2018, 19. Um, so I, that's all I did was give them piano and, and a vocal and they completely reimagined, um, no spoilers now because the track listing is out there, but they reimagined Empty Street, which is one of my favorite songs uh, from the, the final Yellow Card album. And it's a song actually that I had in the bag for many, many years. I co-wrote it with a friend of mine named Sean O'Donnell, who actually played in Yellow Card for about a year and a half. Um, he wrote on When We Were When You're Through Thinking Say Yes and toured with us on that record. We've been friends since we were 18 or 19 years old. Anyways, we we had that song written for a little side project we had, and it finally made it on a Yellow Card record. And that's the one I sort of thought about for Hammock because it just it's it's um it's very big and 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 sort of epic and anthemic um in that way and and so I uh, gave them this very you know this breathy quiet vocal and they turned it into this massive soundscape of a post rock song it's just it's incredible it's one of my it's actually um it might be my favorite song on a hopeful sign like it might be my favorite hammockized version of one of the songs but anyways getting to your question of, of why now uh so they gave me that song and i was still waiting around to see if anybody else could commit mm -hmm. and um i talked to my manager at the time it was not yellow cards managers a friend of mine who was just helping me with all my solo stuff i was doing and i said what if i just reach out to mark and see if they want to do the whole record you know and i can i can think of um some other songs and I'll just send them a piano and vocal and I'll let them do it. And, and my, my manager, uh, Andy Snape, uh, who is uh, just a legend in my life, such a good friend, such a good guy. He, um, loved the idea. And so I reached out to Mark. I said, Hey man, I don't know if you have time for this, but this is so good. I, I, I it, what you did with this song is so special. And I think fa yellow card fans are going to absolutely have their brains melt inside their skulls when they hear this, because it's just so special and cool. How would you feel about doing some more songs? So that turned into uh, what, what was probably going to be an EP, four or five songs. And I was streaming a lot at the time on Twitch. Um, I have a Twitch channel that I'm pretty active on. So I did a fun thing with fans on Twitch where I let them sort of vote and, and choose. You know, we would do like polls for which songs I should, I should work up for Hammock next. Yeah. Um, and so that's how the songs were selected. But again, it only started with a few songs. Um, cause it was just going to be a little EP. That's all they had time for. Well, then the process has now taken, you know, two years to where we're at now. It's in late, it's 2021 going into 2022. Um, and when, when yellow card was doing our sort of covert operation to, um, make childhood eyes, the EP we put out, we, you know, we didn't announce that we were making any new music. We were just going to show up and play riot fest. Um, so earlier in 2022, we were we were demoing and working on that EP. And while I was with the guys for the first time in six and a half years or whatever, I said, hey, I've been working on this thing. Now that we're going to do this again, I think this could be a really cool project for us to put out under the yellow card name because it originally was going to come out as William Ryan Key and Hammock because I didn't know yellow card was ever going to be a band again. Mm -hmm. So I played them the four or five tracks that I had that Hammock had sort of rough mixes for. Everyone was obviously super pumped. On it. I found out about Hammock because of Josh Portman, our bass player. He's been a fan longer than I have, and he showed the band to me. Um, so everyone was pretty blown away by by what it was. And I said, well, I, I think we should reach out to them and see if they want to do a full length. Um, and everyone was on board. So I reached out to Mark and I said, hey, this is sort of leveled up. I know originally it was like, how much time do you have to do this little EP that we're going to put out? And, you know, people are going to listen to it, but it's not going to have, you know, the yellow card sort of marketing machine behind it, right? Um, and I said, this is the real thing. Yellow card is, is coming back. And we all had this thought that maybe we should turn this into a bit of a bigger project. And, um, Mark got back to me and, and said that they loved it and they wanted to do it. So, uh, did a, did a few pick, went on Twitch and did a poll for a few more songs with the fans, um, got the track listing together. And then I started working on again, just, just a basic piano and, and vocal performance to send to them. Um, and, and to be honest, there's only a few spots on the record out of all nine songs where you even hear the piano I played coming through. 
um, because they really did. And I told them to do, you know, I, I, we, the band, not just me, but we, we asked them to really just take all the liberty they wanted to, like, even with the vocal, if they wanted to change that around and move it around or affect it, however, just do whatever you want that we want this to be uh, a really, really deep collaboration. And they, and they did. So there's only a few spots where the piano kind of pokes through where I must've written a part that maybe they were like, Oh, that's interesting. I'll we'll keep that in there, you know? Um, but otherwise it really is uh, a ground up reimagining of these nine uh, songs. Some of them are, are, you know, kind of really familiar singles that people recognize. And then uh, several of them are pretty, pretty deep album cut, you know, deep cuts from, from records. And, um, it's always a special thing. I think when songs like that get to sort of have a spotlight on them, you know, because they're not the songs that everybody knows. Um, and, and, uh, there's obviously a lot of visibility on, on yellow card right now, which is an amazing thing. And so I think some of, some of these old, uh, older, lesser known songs, and then some of the newer, lesser known songs from, uh, lift a sail and, and the final album, um, mm. are, are going to kind of see the light of day now in a new way. And, so far, the reaction to it has just been amazing. I, when you do something like this, I think the standard reaction from a rock and roll fan, uh, whether it be our genre or any other, is, man, I prefer the original. That this, You just get that a lot. You know, you try to do these cool, fun projects that you think are these just brilliant creative endeavors, and people are just like, man, no, it's not, not for me. Yeah. Uh, but we released Ocean Avenue um, a few weeks ago, uh, the hammock version with a, with a music video, and... Um, it it has just been overwhelming how positive the reaction has been and how excited people are to hear the rest of the record. So um, that's how it came to be. Yeah. Um, so the debut album just hit 20 years last year. So looking back, do you have a favorite memory associated with that release? Like, did you have a feeling like, oh, I've made it? <laughs> I mean, there's, well, there's so many, uh, you know, I mean, the yeah. first time you see your music video on mtv i remember we were all you know we knew what what time it was going to be on um and we were all on the, on the tour bus in the front lounge just glued to the tv waiting you know um winning a video music award uh which is sitting here on my desk still it's uh that was pretty monumental experience um i i very much was a an mtv kid i grew up on on uh, pop music and and mtv videos you know i, I didn't have um there wasn't a lot of like cool indie vinyl spinning, spinning in my house as a kid. So I found my music on the radio, you know? Um, and so I, I watched the VMAs as far back as, as I can remember, you know, so being there, uh, and, and winning an award on top of just being there, uh, that, that was a real eye opening sort of like, holy shit moment, you know, that this has gone farther than we ever could have possibly imagined. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's a lot. The you know, in, traveling internationally so much back for the for the first time in my life, uh, back then playing in Japan, playing in Australia, um, you know, going touring all over Europe. Th those were really really big moments too, because it's just you know when your music reaches uh, first beyond your little town and then beyond your state and then on and on and on. And you know, as you're playing uh, on the other side of the planet, um, th those were those were pretty pretty cool special moments when we realized that you know we had something. Yeah. Definitely. Um, so what else have you been listening to lately? Is there anyone else that you feel is really like breaking boundaries in the scene? You know, um, in, in our scene, I couldn't tell you, yeah. I, I, I just, it's just not my, uh, it's just not where I live musically in my head, you know, I mean, yeah. but, and, and again, I said this just a minute ago, our genre or whatever genre of rock and roll. I just, I just don't really listen to much guitar and drums uh music anymore yeah. um i yeah I, i'm into like german producer djs and icelandic composers and stuff it's i'm in a really <laughs> different place musically yeah. than i used to be um but uh, i i will say that one of the more recent records from our um our world of music that that i was really impressed by and i've listened to a hundred times is um pierce the veil's latest album um I, I, I'm so proud of those guys. Uh, you know, we're, we're friends and, and Vic and I have become pretty good buds over the last couple of years. And, uh, you know, Vic came in and sang on one of the new yellow card songs, which was really special for us. Um, but they, you know, they, with that record, I think they really, they stepped out of 
their their own box, you know, and and pushed boundaries and really made a very different album. And um, I I think I kind of touched on this earlier. When you try and do things like that, a lot of times it's really a struggle to get people who have you know been expect listening to you for so long and they expect a certain thing that they they want to get out of your music. It's really hard sometimes to get everybody on board. Um, and this album is their biggest album ever. It's like they're getting crazy radio play. They're touring their biggest shows ever. I mean, it's just, I'm so happy for them, you know, because I've been on, on that, that ride, the last two yellow card records were very experimental for us. I mean, we really, really tried to do something, you know, completely different than we'd done before. And they were not our most well-received records, you know? So to see my friends do something, try something so bold and have that success. Um, I, I just am really, really proud of them. And, and it's really cool to see, cause I know how hard it can be. Okay. And I do have a fun question for you. You are a big Star Wars fan. Do you have <laughs> Do you have a favorite character, and why? Uh, I yes, I am a Yoda man. Um, yeah. I always have been, and I, you know, I have a podcast called Thank the Maker uh, that I host with Adam Russell from Story of the Year, um, Nick Gambarian from Bayside, and our friend Mike Forrester, who is uh, he's a costumer. He makes uh, like armor you know mandalorian armor and stormtrooper armor and things like that um yeah. so we've been hosting this show for uh three or four years now and we did a, a, a favorite character episode at some point through you know like a poll with our we have a, a patreon and uh we did kind of like favorite character polls and i was really surprised to find out that like it isn't it is not a common thing for yoda to be people's favorite character i thought it was going to be kind of a, a thing where it was like well yeah me too but it really wasn't um and I, I think uh, we don't have to get too nerdy into Star Wars, but for me, just um, I uh, am not a person that subscribes to one particular religion or or faith. Uh, I, I just I believe that we're all here on the earth together. And it's hard for me to get my head around the fact that one person thinks their their story is the right one. And the other, you know, the other person's yeah. is not. I just don't. But. Star Wars for me has always sort of been that constant as far as um, as a kid. I, I, I feel like I just I, I truly learned like values and um, and, you know, I learned about family and honor and, and values and things from from the story of Star Wars and uh, Yoda's teachings. I mean, it's just it's all it's it's all the good stuff from, you know, man's religion in, in sci fi. I think it's you know, there's a little bit of Buddhism. There's a little bit of Christianity. There's Christianity. There's uh, there's there's all these different aspects but it's just focused on on peace and mindfulness you know and um and and i love that i always have i still you know i if i if i need to center myself i still will go put on empire strikes back and just watch the training scenes because yeah. uh, that dialogue is just it's all time yeah all right well i think we're out of time but thank you so much you're welcome yeah thanks for covering uh the new record and yeah and, uh, we really right. appreciate it take care Okay, cheers. You too.